ကပါပေါ်မှာလူသားများအားလုံးစုစုပေါင်းကစဗန်းပွိုင်စစ်ဘီလီယံလောက်ရှိပါတယ်ဒါ 2020 ဆိုလိုတာကသူတို့ဖတ်နိုင်အောင်ကျန်းစာအုပ်သူတို့ပြောသောဘာသာစကားအားဖြင့်အဆင်သင့်ဘာသာပြန်ထားပြီးသားထ
Not to get communist nang anima or ma chance ago, delock a miabia, than near Duma, no? Than near Duma, delock a miajigo, tow we bureau Pajare, so that we are, no? Get daro, ah, Mimma Mimia, dread chance are all, so I go to Yabare. The chair let it go, Payara let, Giara let it all eat, and the option or say Mugonsia. จันทร์สาธิตย์นี่เนี่ยตรอลีรอจูซาแค่จับบาเรเดี๋ยวมาจนตุยะเมสโนชินเมียมมีเมียอะตวยจันทร์สาอุกโกอะสะอะซุงท
မြန်မာနိုင်ငံကြမ်းစာအတင်းကနေပြီးတော့အတင်းတော့အတင်းတော့တိုင်းမှာနှစ်စဉ်အလွန်ငွေကျွန်တော်တို့ကောက်ခံ
ตายาโดตะชินอาผิงโกนอชิมวนตวาเรไอซีซีลุงแกมะกูจีซูติมมาเรอายัมแฮปปี้ทูบีแบ็กอินยังกอนยังกอนกูปะยอกชิลาราจ
And so they had to walk. And from Cana to Capernaum would be one day. And so Jesus just told the officer, Go. Your son is alive. And so the officer of Herod went back to Capernaum. And he arrived the following day. And when he arrived, his son was already well. And he asked his servants, What time did my son get well? The servant said, Yesterday. It was at the same time that Jesus said, Your son is healed. This was a miracle that Jesus performed by remote control. Jesus was in Cana, the patient was 30 kilometers away. And when Jesus said those words, the words traveled all the way to Capernaum, and in less than a second, the words healed. The boy. And this is also the town, Cana, where Jesus performed the first miracle. The healing of the nobleman's son happened later. This is the first miracle of Jesus also here in Cana. The turning of water into wine. And our study this morning will be on this first miracle of Jesus. And if you have your Burmese Bible, open them to John chapter 2. We will begin with verse 1. Until the verse 11. But for now, we will start with Mary's request. The mother of Jesus. Chapter 2, verse 3. And Mary said to Jesus, They have no wine. When Mary said that, it was shocking. Because in Chinese Because during the time of Jesus, wedding feasts were major events. In my country, the Philippines, we have Hundreds of feasts every year. But the feast lasts for only one day. During the time of Jesus, they last for one week. If you are poor, do not get married during the time of Jesus. 
Because you will go bankrupt. Because during the one week, you feed the guests every day, morning, noon, and evening. And all the hours in between. Because near east, the time of Jesus is not like Myanmar. In Myanmar, you eat only twice a day. In the Near East, they were eating three times a day. And every hour in between those three hours. So during the time of Jesus, they were major events, these wedding feasts. That's why they are not called, in our place we call it wedding ceremonies. Because the ceremony lasts only for one hour, 30 minutes. Time of Jesus, they were feasts. They last for one week. It was the culture for the family of the man, the groom, to feed the people every day. And if you run out of food, that is a big embarrassment. Because in the culture of the, of the Near East, if you run out of food, your guests will bring you to court. That's why Mary was fearful. Mary asked the help of Jesus. The bride at this time is a relative of Mary. That's why Mary was helping in the preparations and in the giving of the programs because she was a relative of the bride. And Mary knew what his son can do. Because she is her father. He, uh, he is her son. After all, she was a virgin when she became pregnant. And she knew this baby here is God's son. She saw the shepherds. She saw the wise men. She can't be wrong. She knows her son very well. And she knows what he can do. This morning I have a question for you. Do you know Jesus? Do you know what he can do for you? Mary had a close relationship with Jesus. That's why she knows him very well. We can know Jesus if we have a close relationship with him. If he is your friend, you will not hesitate to come to him. Let's go back to verse 2. 
Jesus was invited to the wedding with his disciples. This was the beginning of Jesus' ministry. At this time, Jesus had six disciples. James, John, Andrew. James, John, Andrew, yeah. Peter, Philip, and Nathaniel. Uh, Peter, Philip, and Nathaniel. The first six disciples of Jesus. At least four lessons we can learn from this verse. Number one. Jesus does not go where he is not invited. If you don't invite him, he will not come. Number two. Number When you invite Jesus into your life, he will accept your invitation. Number three. When Jesus is in your life, expect blessings in overflowing abundance. Number four. If you don't in invite Jesus, the outcome will be disastrous. What would have happened if Jesus was not there in that wedding? It would have been a big embarrassment when the wine ran out. Now let's go to verse 5. His mother said to, Jesus, to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. The background is the request of Mary. Mary said to Jesus, Son, they have no wine. And Jesus said to Mary, So what? And Mary said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Mary's faith is amazing during that time. She knew Jesus would not allow embarrassment for the family. She knew Jesus would help. That's why she told the servants, whatever he says, you follow. I enjoy reading about these servants. These servants, they do not think at all. They are stupid people. Whatever you tell them, they obey. You tell them to do stupid things, they will do it. These servants do not have common sense at all. So Jesus said, fill the jars with water. 
That is in verse 7 now. And what did the servants do? Did the servants say, What? We do not serve water in feasts. No, they don't question. Jesus said, Fill the jars with water. The servant said, Okay. Water. Okay. Because Mary said, Do whatever he says. But in feasts, you don't drink water. You drink wine, not water. But the instruction was, do whatever he says. And so the servants filled the jars. With water. Up to the brim. To a level where nothing more could be added. Really to the full. Jars with water. Stupid servants. Here are five lessons. Number one. When you follow Jesus, don't ask questions. Some of us ask questions before we follow. Some of us ask questions and never follow. But in the case of Jesus, obey and don't ask questions. There are some of you who were probably trained in the military. When I was young, I was in college, I was preparing myself to be an officer in the Philippine Army. And so we were trained to obey before we complain. And so you knock at the office, knock, knock. And the officer is sitting on the table. Officer And then you say, Good morning, sir, can I come in? Good morning, sir. And the officer will answer, Give me 20 push-ups. <laughs> And so you drop on the ground and do 20 push-ups. And then you stand and say, Sir, thank you, sir. Can I come in now? And the officer will say, You give me 20 more. And so before you can even get inside the office, you have to do 40 push-ups. And then after the 40 push-ups, you give your salute and say, Order complied with. Thank you, sir. You're the one being punished. You're the one saying thank you. So in the military, we obey first before we complain. But with Jesus, obey and don't complain. Because Jesus does not operate in the realm of the finite. 
Jesus runs affairs in the realm of the impossible. Jesus does things we don't understand. So don't ask questions. Because you ask questions, you still will not understand. I am a biology major. I was not preparing to be a teacher. I am a teacher now. But I was preparing to be a physician. And I visited a dentist one time. And the dentist learned that I'm a biologist. And he said, oh, so you want to be a doctor? He said, I was also a biologist. I wanted also to be a doctor. I'll give you the secret. He said, when you want to be a doctor, I'm not sure if there are doctors here, physicians. Maybe this is your strategy also. But the dentist said, if you want to survive, don't ask questions. Whatever the professor gives you, just memorize and memorize. Even if you don't understand. Because if you want to understand, four years will not be enough. So just memorize, when you are already a doctor, you will understand. And so that is the secret of doctors. Now you know. Some of these doctors who are treating you, now they already understand. When they were studying your sickness, they did not understand. They just memorized that. It's the same with Jesus. Follow him even if you don't understand why. When you follow Jesus, follow him with all your heart. I pity you. Do you have no more aircon? Maybe you will be perspiring very soon. Look at the servants. They filled the jars up to the brim. No room for anything more. And so if you want to follow Jesus, don't, don't follow him with a jar half full. Follow Jesus with your jars full to the brim. Because he wants your full dedication and total commitment. Do not leave any room for doubt. 
because we trust him that he knows what is best for us. Number three. Follow Jesus even if you think he's wrong. There will be times you do not understand what God is asking you to do. Follow the Nike shoes. Just do it. Even if you think Jesus made a mistake. Because with God, there are no mistakes. And then we can sing the song of Moses. Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. ပြတဲ့ <laughs> The Lord loves to give us pleasant surprises. Because he's a great, because he's a great and marvelous God. If you trust him completely. And without reservation. Lesson number four. When you follow Jesus, He will bless you abundantly. Let's go back to John chapter 2. Verse 7. Fill the jars with water. You go back to verse 6. Nearby stood six stones with water jars. Used for ceremonial washing, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. So, so that's an average of about 25 gallons per jar. Six jars, that means 150 gallons. That's equivalent to three and a half barrels of pure, delicious grape juice. Because during the time of Jesus, they were, the wine was grape juice. That's why the master of the wedding feast said, How come that you are serving delicious wine at the end of the wedding and not at the beginning? Why? Because the grape juice was fresh. This juice that we drink at communion, that's Welch juice. You, op- you open that. And put it on the table. 
tomorrow that is already sour. You have to put that in the refrigerator so that it will remain fresh. Because the, the, the grape juice ferments. So when Jesus turned that water into wine, it was fresh. It has not fermented yet. That's why it was very delicious. In the other wedding feasts, the wine is not delicious already after three, four, five days. Why? Because the juice has already fermented. And during the time of Jesus, there were no refrigerators. And so the grape juice was only delicious on the first day. But not at the wedding of Cana. Because at the wedding of Cana, towards the end of the wedding feast, the grape juice was still delicious. These jars that they were using for the wine they were not for drinking. During the time of Jesus, when there's a wedding feast or there are feasts or there are programs, there is water at the entrance of the door of the house. And so you enter the house, before you do that, you get water to wash your feet. These was the jars that they were using for drinking. They were not water for drinking. They were water to wash the feet. So that water was not clean. But the miracle of Jesus he turned the water into wine. And before he turned it into wine, he subjected the water to a purification process. Equivalent to a 25-stage filtering system. <laughs> With activated carbon and ultraviolet light. Carbon and ultraviolet light. And so before that water turned into wine, it was very, very pure, clean, drinkable water. Lesson number five. When God helps you, He expects you to have a part. The work of turning water into wine was very easy for Jesus. He did not need the servants to help Him in filling the jars with water. Jesus could say, water from the river, fly. Go to the jars. 
fill them to the brim. Eri u ati ti ku ti ong ti lai su pro tu aming pi lu ya. And Jesus could just say, "Servant, watch." Tu pi lu ya ke ngai daru alu tamaru ji ni ji ni su pro ji kai lu ya. Watch my power. Ji zang ngai ti gu su pro lu ya. And then Jesus could say, "Water, you are now wine. Go to the glasses of the guests." Ah, now, kira piaga bapio lu ya leke. Ji, me aku wine si bi ke wine lu. Ederi si ye pangkut sama utaja supra ming pilu ya. No need for servants. Ngedari malu babu. But Jesus did not do that. Tapi kira piaga elu malu bu. Jesus said, "Servants, fill the jars with water." Ngedari ku kira piyo leke. Pi lai ba ji u ku pi lai ba piyo le. And then Jesus said, "Servants, get the water and serve them to the guests." Ke alau tamaru u lega ji ku yu e deri ku toa piro we ba unsa mu pe ba. Remember, the servants were stupid. Kuna ruang ngedari soraga tero ku ngatou ni no mami re mala. They poured water. You tell I there. Jesus did not tell them that water is wine now. Kredo peaga, aku jia wine si bilu lemah piobu. And Jesus said, "Get water, give to the guests." Eh, eri jia ku, eh dia ku toh tai lai ba, jilu be piora. You see, Jesus' purpose was not to show off his powers. Nak kredo ye jia ye cakap tu ye tegu jima mugu. Jesus did not tell the people, "Watch, this is majesty from heaven." And Luri, Jimachi, Zanga, Jiguri, Pia, Konga, Pire, Yari, Subro, Menu, Chini, Subro, Mapiobu. That's why when Jesus, when we ask the Lord for help, He wants us to do our part. Kalau kerja pihak pihak kita jenaruh kungi mazhar cincam yuma jenaruh ya pawai mugu lebet tu alusi de. And so you say, Lord, please help my children to grow up to be good. Kalau pihak kita semakin masuk dalam kama papa, jenaruh tadi milih tu aluji lo kongsi lo angkungi bah lusu dalam kama. Now Jesus will not do everything for you. Kimi ada ya alam buat senden lo bima mahu bu. Your children will be good. They will be good boys and girls. If you do your part. If you train them. If you don't train them. They will be bad. Don't expect God to do what you can do. Then you tell the Lord, Lord, please help my children to be healthy. Please help my children not to get sick. Good. Then don't give your children junk food. You give them soft drinks. When they're 20 years old, they have diabetes. You ask the Lord why. I am very careful here because the officers of the union are here. But you know. Our doctrine is wrong about food. Our doctrine is wrong. Okay, Jenaro doctrine, Jenaro Yongji Chet Chu Masuloshin Asasa Ne Pate Lushi Mare Lu Pyo Re Turi Le Shi Gong Shi Me. In the doctrine before I was baptized, Jenaro Ni Chim Ma Kan Ki No Jenaro Yongji Tha Re Le Kan Tha Re Ya Ga. I was informed, do not drink coffee. Because it has caffeine. And caffeine is a drug. So if you drink coffee, you drink drug. You will become a drug addict. Then we were told, do not 
drink Coke. Coke. Do, do not drink Pepsi. Pepsi When I was small, we called it Pepsi. <laughs> we were not allowed to drink that because it has caffeine. But they said you can drink orange. Come orange, no Because it has no caffeine. But what I did not know was that orange soft drink has eleven tablespoons of white sugar. And so you ask why these people who drink Coca-Cola and we don't drink Coca-Cola, we're just eat, we're just drinking we're just drinking orange juice. How come they have diabetes and we have diabetes too? <laughs> We need to change our doctrine. It's not just drinking Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola Or coffee. It should be don't drink soft drinks. Because that is sugar. Lots and lots and lots of sugar. So are you wondering why you are sleeping in church? Are you wondering why your feet are numb? Or your fingers are numb? That is sugar. Are you wondering why your children are so noisy in school? That is sugar. So you say, Lord, Please help me to be healthy. Then do your exercise every day. You pray, but you don't do your part. God will not help you. How come the people outside have heart attack? How come? Adventists have heart attack too. Because the food that they eat is fat. The food that we eat is not fat. But it is cooked in oil. The same. You ask, Lord, why are you not answering my prayers? And he will say, because you're not doing your part. You ask, Lord, why is my life difficult? I work hard but I'm still poor. I don't have enough money. You know the Lord's answer? In this life, it will always be difficult. What is important is you obey and follow me. Remember lesson number one? When you follow Jesus, don't ask questions. All the disciples of Jesus, they all gave their life for their faith. 
That you see in the New Testament, the one who is writing many of the writings in the New Testament. He was beheaded. All the rest of the disciples, they became martyrs. We will close our message this morning with a poem. And I will share this poem with you. Most, most of you will understand this. This is in English. At the end, um, he, we, this will be translated in summary. It says like this, The secret of a happy life is an industrious hand, which gladness finds in earnest work for noble purpose planned. It leaves no time for idle fears, thoughts morbid or depressed, but cheerfully it does its part. And leaves to heaven the rest. The secret of a happy life is in a loving heart, whose goodwill flows to all its kind, to all with joy impart. It shares in others' will and woo, is not with self engrossed. The richest and the happiest heart is his who loves the most. The secret of a happy heart is a believing soul, serenely trusting in the power which animates the whole. On earnest, upright, loving lives, Heaven's choicest blessings fall, the Christ of God within the soul, the crowning joy of all. ไอ้กะเปียลีกูจนอนเนี่ยอจิ้นชุบเปียวยะแม่สรุษิ I have a question for each of you today. Do you live a life of what to why? Lord, what is this? Lord, why is that? Lord, why did you do this to me? Lord, what are you doing? Why, Lord? Are you living a life of what to why? Or has your life been turned from water to wine? Jesus can perform a miracle in your life. He can turn your water into wine. If you allow him. And decide to serve him. And follow him. How many of you this morning would let Jesus into your life? Raise your hand. Let us bow our heads. Sudah jumpa so.